Hi everyone, it's Simon Keeling here at weatherweb.net and it's Wednesday the 21st of January. Thanks again for watching. Uh, interesting developments taking place uh, late next week. Uh, potentially all the models going for a similar sort of story. Um, I'll show you in just a second. These uh, 7 to 10 day mean of the 500 millibar flow looking like this. Um, this is the ECMWF on the left here. We've got the GFS on the right and notice how both of them in remarkable agreement bringing in the sharp trough across the eastern states and then a ridge in the Atlantic which then plunges us into a northwesterly jet. It's the same on both of these charts. This is putting cold air down into uh, the Mediterranean, develops cutoff low down here and pulls in this cold air down from the northwest across the UK. But what to notice is it's getting fed by uh, this uh, cold pool that's across uh, the western parts of Greenland and the far northeast of Canada. So that's just pumping in cold air all the time into the back of this jet, whilst at the same time we've got warm air coming northwards off the Atlantic. So it really is a strong jet stream. And in that position, it would push low pressure areas south of the UK. So they'd be taking uh, this sort of track. Let's just get that clear for you. So it'd be taking this sort of track down through the country, perhaps a little bit further north than that. Um, but what it does is it puts us on the cold side of the jet and on the cold side of those lows. And this is for the period from next Wednesday through to Saturday the 15th. Now, prior to that, we're into slightly milder conditions, but temperatures then take a tumble. This is the 850 temperatures uh, for London from the ECMWF. You see, we've got the uh, dates here across the bottom of the chart. So 850 is about 5,000 feet. The reason we use that is that um, it gives us a good idea of temperature trends and removes out many of the diurnal variations. So you see here, starting off in these cool conditions, look, we head into warm conditions at the end of this week, very early part of next week, but the ECMWF trying to bring us back into cooling conditions again by about the 27th of January. So things it sees cooling off once more. And actually, the GFS Ensemble going for something very, very similar. Now this is how the ECMWF looks. I've just got here for you uh, the day, uh, where are we? Let me just uh, scroll up a little bit on this screen for you. There we go. Uh, so we've got day four up here. So this is going to be uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So this is going to be Sunday's chart. Monday, we got Tuesday here, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and we have Saturday in here, so that's a week on Saturday. Notice what happens, look, builds this ridge northwards into the Atlantic, but this feature coming off the northeastern parts of the States and Canada, uh, putting cold air all the time within here, just cools it off. So it means that the ridge just can't get built in properly. And eventually it breaks through that ridge, look, by Wednesday of next week, then it starts to turn the flow into the west-northwest, there it is coming down into a northwesterly, and there we go with quite a cold plunge into the end of next week. It's still difficult to put the details on it, but certainly that downward trending temperature seems to be there. Now this is the Canadian GEM. Uh, it's four, uh, it goes in 12 hour steps, and this is the, uh, so this is gonna be midday on the 27th. So this is next Tuesday. We've got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday here. No, we haven't. What am I saying here? Let me let me let me start again with that. So, what we have here is the 27th, which is next Tuesday. Okay, that's Wednesday. That's midday Thursday, and that's Friday with going into Saturday here. And you notice it does a similar thing. Look, it's trying to build the ridge look into the Atlantic here, but there is that trough getting into the states. It kind of just cools off the northern sides of the ridge, allows this west-northwesterly to be breaking through. And there it is, look, on the Canadian GEM, almost a carbon copy of the uh, ECM WF. It's remarkable how similar those two charts are. So, looking towards these cooler conditions at the back end of next week, and interesting to see what the CFS plays around with here, because this is the NAO prediction from the CFS, goes ahead to April. So it's going a long way ahead, but this is where we are just at the moment. And what's particularly interesting here is how the NAO is predicted to go uh, into, uh, or stay positive, 
through until the final third of February, then running into a negative pattern. Look, it's the black line, the solid black line that we're looking at here. Kind of it just bounces around a little bit, but stays generally positive. But then look down into negative territory. Now, look at the Arctic Oscillation. That's way down in negative territory, according to the CFS, and it just stays there. So what we pick up from that is that uh, this allows the negative Arctic Oscillation, allows cool air to sink off the pole, to get off the pole down into the Northern, Hem Northern Hemisphere. So you combine that with that pattern in this stage here, and that gives us this push towards this cool west to west northwesterly flow. Now, I think it's important to stress that we're not talking um, mega winter conditions. We're not talking snowmageddon and that well-known uh, soothsayer who, you know, terrifying winter weather, all that sort of nonsense. We're not talking that at all. But I think what we are talking is cool and settled conditions. And it could become very windy at times, and there could be, given this sort of pattern, some snow across central southern parts of the UK particularly. Now, it wouldn't be snow that lasts for days on end, but certainly there could be some events in there. And I think what we do need to watch is this period from here. Um, it's about, it's the final third of February, so it's from about the 18 onwards, because that combined with uh, the negative Arctic Oscillation, that then gets us into uh, potentially some uh, colder weather. But We'll take a look. There were some thoughts, and I put this out on uh, on uh, to private clients about how we were kind of tentatively suggesting that spring would be delayed, that we go quite cool through much of spring. Although actually March may well see high pressure build in, and there could be lots of sunshine, but overnight frost. So it would feel nice in the days, but then go cold at night. And this sort of pattern here is kind of suggesting that that could still be uh, potentially the case, with it not really getting warmer until later on in the month. Told you it was interesting times, didn't I? This is gonna be a really fascinating one to watch now, uh, how the rest of the winter and the potential for spring develops. Fascinating, isn't it? Anyway, I'm gonna leave you with that for now. God, I love the weather. It's just brilliant, isn't it, the way it works? Uh, anyway, I'm gonna leave you with that for now. If you need a forecast for the next few days, check out our fast forecast for all the details. But for now, whatever you are doing, thanks again for watching. Do keep the sun shining and bye for now.